Welcome to College Algebra, section 4.2. Mr. Carlson here. So we're talking about exponential functions, and so let's look at the kind of types of functions we might see. So let's start by looking at the general form, which is going to be y equals a times b to the x. Now remember, what's the point of what we're doing here? The point is x is in the exponent. That's what makes these functions different than what we've seen before, is that x is in the exponent. So we're going to look at some cases the first case I want to look at is if a is bigger than 1 and b is bigger than 1. Okay, so what does the graph look like if a is, po actually a is bigger than uh, 0, I should say. If a is positive and b is bigger than 1. So a is po if a equals 0, right, if a equals 0, then this is just a flat line because it's just 0 everywhere. So that's kind of boring. So we're going to look at if a is bigger than 0, b is bigger than 1. And that's going to, in general, look like this. So let's talk, this is what exponential growth looks like. Now, let's talk about what's going on. First off, notice that we have an asymptote at zero. Do you remember in our previous examples how we never got a negative number and we never got zero when we took it to a power? As a result, the graph is never going to hit the x-axis. Even as the number, even as the exponent gets really big and negative, it just makes it into a fraction, 1 over, and then that number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so the whole fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and making us just get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote. So that's what's happening there. Now I'll tell you, most exponential functions cross through this point right here. That's the point 0, 1. Now why is that? Remember in our examples, when we plugged in 0, anything to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. So in other words, whenever we plug in 0, most of the time we're going to go through that point right here. The only time that changes is if a is something different. So if we multiply it on the outside by some other number, then where we're going to cross here is going to be whatever the a value is. Okay. But most of the time, for most of your examples, including 3 to the x and 5 to the x that we did earlier, they're going to cross through, they're going to look the same, but they're going to cross through the point 0, 1. So that's if a is positive and if b is bigger than 1. What about if a is positive and b is a fraction? Specifically, if b is in between 0 and 1. Okay, what does the graph look like then? Remember, this is like the third example that we looked at in the previous video, where we had 2 over 7, the fraction. Basically what that does is it kind of flips this around. We still most of the time go through this point right here, 0, 1, except now it kind of looks like this. So it kind of has turned this around a bit. And the reason it's done that is because 0, 1, I hopefully is making sense to you. If you take anything to the 0, you get a 1. But if it's a fraction, as the exponent goes up, we multiply the fraction times itself, times itself, times itself, which makes it get smaller and smaller. On the other hand, if we add in a negative, that takes the inverse of the fraction. So now, in, I mean the reciprocal. So now instead of 2 over 7, you have 7 over 2, which is bigger than 1. And then as that exponent grows, it multiplies a number bigger than 1 times itself, which makes it grow exponentially positively as the exponent gets negative. So over here, we have 2 over 7 times itself a whole bunch, which makes itself get smaller and smaller. But when you 2 the, to the negative, it becomes 7 over 2, and then that's 3.5, and then as you multiply that times itself, it grows up forever. So hopefully that's making sense. So now let's look at the other two cases. So far we've looked at a is bigger than 0, b is bigger than 1. So what happens if a is negative? And we'll keep b the same. So b is bigger than 1, a is negative. As usual, if you're multiplying a function by a number and you just add a negative sign to it, it basically just flips it over the x-axis. So as usual, when you add a negative to a function, most of the time it just flips over the x-axis and just flips upside down. So that's pretty much, I hope, under, just easy to understand. So this would, for example, be the function y equals negative 3 to the x. Basically just turns the whole thing negative. 
So finally, what if a is negative and b is a fraction? Basically, it just flips this thing upside down. So it would look like this. Easy enough. So notice that if a is negative, it basically flips these upside down. For example, this could be the function, say, um, these are just sketches, but y equals 2 over 7, negative 2 over 7 to the x, for example, would be what this looks like. So most of the time, these are the two we're going to look at, but these are the four types of graphs that are possible. In the next video, we'll look at a few more examples of exponential functions. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if this was helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe. See you in the next video.